we used the assessment for learning principles mm. as, as a sort of um, way to rag rate ourselves as individuals yeah. and then to bring it to the table and say what was it that we were doing as individuals well but equally we could spot the gaps. Um, so that was really, really useful. And then we created a mini action plan, um, a sort of simple action plan that um, focused on the areas for development. Um, and then really it's been that sort of process through from that point for the last three years to the point that I think we've got to now, although we acknowledge that where we are now, we've still got little extras that we need to do to, to improve it even further. But it became a, a focus for the whole school. So yeah. like I say, um, we had a mini action plan as far as things that we aimed to do. Mm. But obviously from the September it formed a, a massive part of the school development plan um, and within that it became everybody across the school, teaching assistants, support staff um, and the teachers themselves, it became their objectives through their performance management reviews, um, so the whole package really again pushed, pushed it forward and the governing body really got on board with it. I mean obviously they'd asked me to look at it so then they were keen to see what I was doing about it so um, you know in my head teachers reports at our curriculum and standards committee meetings they would ask me lots and lots of questions and want to see evidence see um, yeah to see examples to see that it was actually happening. About what worked really well for you? What would, what would you use again? What worked really well for you? Please discuss this with your partner. Okay. And did you respond to that? Is that your writing underneath about yeah. it? Okay then. Could you read that out, please? Okay. Sorting the information into the decks worked really well. I'll definitely use that method again. I'll read my head questions even more carefully. You always look forward to getting comments from your teachers. Yes, but it's, it's something yeah. extra to do after I sit down. Can you tell me about one of the comments you've had? Um, how do you feel an England support? How do you think an England supporter of the 1960s would feel? And I feel I think they would be proud to be English. And do you often respond to yeah. the comments? Are there ways in which the comments help your learning and help the next things that you've got to do? Elizabeth. It helps you pick up on the things you haven't got there, and then you know what you have to do in your next piece of work. And have you got an example there for us? Um, yeah, my target was it's difficult to find something to help you improve. However, if you ended with a simple paragraph highlighting her achievements in the bus, I think it would make this even better. Right. Have you tried to do that later on? I see you've got a comment there saying that, what was your response? Okay, great. I will make sure I remember something like this in my head. One of the things that we did in part, as part of the process was to look at the marking um, policy. And again, that has probably evolved um, over the years. It's probably had about three or four different yes, drafts yes. <laughs> um, to the point that it's at now. Because we found that when new members of staff came in or when people went out and, and visited other schools, they'd come back with little gems that they thought we can mm. add that to it as well. Um, but we have a very simple, yes, a very simple way of recording. So we can put a VF for verbal feedback. Um, we include ticks to say that they've met the learning objective. We include a little symbol that's the steps that shows what the next steps are and a T in a circle that is the sort of longer term goal, the target that they're aiming to achieve over a sort of a series of lessons perhaps. And do you think your work's improved this year? Yeah, my work. My work's improved. How do you know? Because um, we've got these folders and we can look back at um, what we had in year three. And, um, and so what ways does your work improve in writing? Um, like more detail and better words. More detail, write the vocabulary? Yeah. Yes, what's about punctuation? Yeah, I started to use more where do you get your ideas from for creative writing? I get mine from reading. Do you? Well, because um, we read out some of our work when we've done it, I might find some of the words and things. Yeah. Do you like getting your work back and seeing it marked? Yeah. Why is that? Because I, um, well, I can see what I've done well and then what I need to do next.
better next year. And this is going to be as put as my target. I've got to use high level level connectives yes. because I haven't been using them. What's a high level connective? Like, although, however, despite or something. What difference would they make to it make it make them longer and more detailed? Yes, more interesting for the reader, wouldn't it? Do you sometimes mark each other's work? Yeah, we yeah. do peer assessment. What do you think of peer assessment? Is that what you call it? What do you think of that? I think it's, it's like, good. Um, yeah. I think it's good because we get to see each other's work mm. and we get to read it for ourselves rather than the other person reading it. So what do you get from seeing each other's work that helps you as well as you help oh, them? get ideas and things yeah. from your work. You borrow ideas. Yeah. That's really good. All writers do that. Do you ever mark each other's work? Um, yeah. yeah. With the next steps. We mark each other's work with the um, problem solving. Do you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. There's different groups and then partners and then we switch over to see if you've got the right answer and then compare. So we get a next step um, every um, piece of work we do. Um, so obviously it's the next step of the head of the work we've been doing. So we work that out, write the answer, and um, we check with our partners for about five minutes to see if we've got the same answer, and we mark each other. This is like where we um, self-assess our work and um, like to see if we can do actually. So you, you've recorded the things you can do on a self-assessment show. You yeah. enjoy doing that. Yeah. And then it's been checked. What is the impact of this on standards at the school? Well, thankfully the standards have gone up over yeah. the last few years, um, particularly the progress. I think that's been the key bit for yeah. us to look at. Mm -hmm. um, attainment was often high at the school, yeah. um, children were achieving, but we knew there was that gap mm -hmm. with children that could have achieved better. So mm -hmm. they were achieving the, the expected, but we knew that they mm -hmm. could achieve more. Um, and so, I'd have to look at my data. <laughs> Um, last year, 2012's um, data for our two levels of progress in maths was 100%, 100% in reading and 92% in writing. And that for us would have been one child that didn't make um, yes. their two levels. Yes. And then 40% moved from a 2A to a level 5 in maths and 33% moved from a 2B to a level 5 in reading. Yes. So we managed to, you know, more than expected quite progress as well. Mm -hmm. making and quite a proportion of Better than expected progress. Absolutely. Then, yes. So that was key stage two, but I know looking at the year four data equally, many children make more than a level's progress between the end of year two and the end of year four. Mm. Um, again, quite strong in the maths and the reading. Um, and which aspects of this do you think have been most responsible for that? Um, I think it's, it's just the children understand what it is they're learning and they understand for themselves as individuals, but often also as a cohort, because we find that collectively they all have the same issues mm -hmm. that they have to look at and address. Um, they just feel so, more so much more empowered by, by it, by understanding what it is they're learning and what it is that they need to do next. Right, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Do they sometimes get guided on what they need to do next to get the next sub-level? Yes, although we haven't got, I know from looking yeah. at other schools, yes. they, they have quite sort of clear, uh, clearly laid out at the beginning of their books, you know, yes. to get from a 2A yes. to a level 3, yes. you need to do this, yes. this and this. We still work on those sort of next steps that are, you know, particular to that child. But they do have conversations at yes. the top end of Key Stage yes. 2 about where they are yes. at yes. and where we aim for them to yes. be and what yes. they need to do to get to that point. Yes. Yeah.